הנה מה טוב ומה נעים, שבת אחים גם יחד. הנה מה טוב ומה נעים, שבת אחים גם יחד. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you once again to bring in the Sabbath. I always enjoy getting feedback from people, and one person told me, Rabbi, I love your Shabbat celebrations. For years, I've been suffering from insomnia, and now I just turn on one of your inspirational messages, and I am cured instantly. It's, it's a machaya. Well, regardless of why you're watching and why you wanted to join with us, we're glad to have you. And I'm also very glad to have, as a sponsor of this Shabbat, Nicole Borassa and Paul Hashinsky. I'd like to say to Nicole, Merci beaucoup pour participer ce soir avec nous. C'est un plaisir d'être avec vous et avec Paul. Merci bien. Uh, they will be leading us in the candle lighting ceremony. Uh, we also have Joel and Ellie Brusso who are leading us in the Kiddush. I just have to say that Joel Brusso has done so much for our congregation. He's a very dedicated, hard-working member of the board. He'll be helping us with the move that we're doing, and if you want to get involved and volunteer, you can see him. Also want to share my thanks with Nicole and Paul. Both of them are just wonderful people who have joined with our congregation and celebrate with us. Their background is a little different than ours, but I'm just so thrilled that they want to be a part of what we do, and already they've had tremendous input, and they've benefited our, from our congregation, but we've definitely benefited from them. We also dedicate this Shabbat on this 9-11 to the first responders who risked everything and sometimes gave the ultimate sacrifice in order to save others. We're deeply indebted to them, as we are to the military of the past, and military who are serving right now. We thank you so much for your service, and we appreciate all you do to keep us safe. And now, let the Shabbat begin. Shabbat Shalom. Come, let us welcome Shabbat and give thanks for its light. May our homes shine with the lights of Shabbat, and our hearts glow with Shabbat joy this week and every week. We welcome Shabbat and give thanks for its light. Blessed are you, our God sovereign of the universe who allows us with mitzvahs, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. May we be blessed with Shabbat joy. May we be blessed with Shabbat peace. May we be blessed with Shabbat light. We are new members and are very happy to be part of your community. We hope that the virus will end soon and that we will be able to meet many of you or all of you if possible. Shabbat Shalom. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehad Likner Lehad Likner Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. The verses and blessings that we recite in the Kiddush, the blessing over the wine, proclaim the holiness of Shabbat and trace it back to the creation of the world. We recite the blessing before drinking the wine, which is usually sweet. Sweet wine adds to the beauty of Shabbat. 
making it just a little bit sweeter. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Ari HaGofen Congregation of the Door of a Door, we like to take a rational approach to religion. And so we redefine terms that make sense, not only from a Jewish point of view, but also from a rational scientific perspective. What then can we say about the conscience? How would we describe conscience in rational terms? Well, first of all, we notice that the word conscience has science in it. It's con and then science. Con means with. So in order to have a conscience, we first have to know reality and know the facts that we're dealing with, and then we can adjust to them and try to figure out how to respond in an appropriate manner. Conscience could be considered that small voice, that still small voice inside of us that's urging us to listen to our parents and our grandparents and our ancestors who wanted to create a better world, to move us in the direction of cooperation and love and move us away from the other tendency within us to try to sow division and fear. We believe in Judaism, we say there's a yetzer hatov, yetzer hacha, an inclination to do good or an inclination to do evil. From a, a science point of view, you would say that we have two different drives, a drive to compete with one another and to fight, and another drive to cooperate. And we in Judaism hope that the drive to cooperate will prevail. The conscience is what tells us to try to go with the side the part of us that is inclined towards love and harmony with others. We're also going to continue with blessings, the Baruch Hu and the Ma'ariv and others. These blessings really, uh, even if you don't know Hebrew, you can understand them. It's just basically giving thanks for everything we have and taking time each week to not take anything for granted and to show our appreciation. Because when we do that, it not only helps others if we appreciate them, but it also helps us because we're happier when we go through life appreciative and grateful rather than taking things for granted and not really thinking about how fortunate we are. So we continue now with these wonderful blessings from our tradition interpreted in new ways. <laughs> Oh, 
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bidvaro Ma'arivaravim Bechokma Poteach Shearim Uvit Vuna Meshane Itim Umachalif Et Hazmanim Um Sader Et Akochavim Bemishmerotehem Barakia Kirzono Baruchat Adonai Hamariv Aravi This is a very special Shabbat celebration this evening because we're celebrating Slichot. Slichot means forgiveness or apologies. If you go to Israel and someone steps on your toe, they will say, Slicha, that means forgive me, I'm sorry. In Jewish tradition, seeking forgiveness from God is relatively simple. We just say a prayer, ask forgiveness, and if it's a minor transgression, we're good. Not so with people. If we've transgressed against people, tradition tells us that it's not so easy because people can be harmed by what we do. And so we have to go and ask forgiveness, but not just ask forgiveness, but try to make amends. If we've harmed them in some way, try to undo the harm and also make a commitment to ourselves and to the other person that we're going to try not to do this anymore. This is a very valuable exercise. And tensions have frayed in our country so much. People are at odds with each other. We need this Slichot celebration more than ever. So I hope that we'll take this seriously this Friday and between now and the High Holidays and all the way up until Hoshana Rabbah, which is after the High Holidays, to try to reconcile with each other. So we're going to experience Slichot as well as the Shema, the Yahavta, the Avot, the Yimahot. All of these prayers give thanks for our ancestors who gave us this wonderful heritage, for the blessing of love with the Viahafta, and for the goal of trying to achieve unity in the world, which we recognize in the watchword of the Jewish faith, the Shema. So now we have the Slichot part of our service. Adonai Echad 
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avotenu Vimotenu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzcha, Elohe Yaakov. Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Hael, Hagadol, Hagibor, Vehanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekonei Hakohol, Vezocher Chastei Avot, Vimahot, Umevi Geula, Livne Venehem, Leman Shemo, Veahava. Melech Ozeru Moshia Umagain Baruch Ata Adonai Magain Avraham Ve'ezra Tzara Just a cup of coffee, please. Coming right up. Oh, there's no charge. Thank you. Here you go. Thanks again. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your support. Can I take a picture? Sure. All right. Smile. There you go. Sir? My son would like to ask you a question. That man said you were. I just served as best I could. Can we take a picture? Sure. Thank you for your service. 
Thank you for your support. It's now time for us to engage in silent meditation. As we do so on this Friday night, this Friday night of Slichot and also commemorating 9-11, we have a great need for reflection and introspection. For Slichot, we take time to think about those people that we might have wronged and figure out a good way to try to reconcile. On this occasion, 9-11, we also think back of all those people who sacrificed so much, who never made it back, and the families that they left behind. We are extremely grateful to them, and we're going to spend a moment of silent meditation to be followed by many, many more moments of thanks, of gratitude, and of respect and honor for their blessed memory. time for us to read from the Torah. We'll be reading from Deuteronomy 31, verses 1 to 7. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavorach Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Leolam Vahed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol HaMim Vinatan Lano Et Torato Baruch Ata Adonai וילך משה וידבר את הדברים האלה אל כל ישראל. And Moses went out and spoke these words to the entire people of Israel. ויאמר להם, and he said to them, בן מאה ועשרים שנה אנוכי, I am a hundred and twenty years old, היום, today. לא אוכל עוד לצאת ולבוא, ואדוני אמר אלי, לא תעבור את הירדן הזה, and I will not be crossing over the Jordan with you to go to the promised land, according to what God has told me. No longer can I come and go with you as I did in the past. אדוני אלוהיך הוא עובר לפניך, הוא ישמיד את הגויים האלה, but God will go before you, and he will utterly destroy the nations before you. וירשתם, and you shall conquer them and take their land. 
יהושע הוא עובר לפניך כאשר דיבר אדוני ועושה אדוני להם כאשר עשה לסיחון ולאוג. Joshua will go before you and command you as your leader and they shall do to the people who were there exactly what was done to סיחון and to אוג. מלכי האמורי the Amorite kings, ולארצם, and to their land, אשר השמיד אותם. And in case the people forgot, who, who were utterly destroyed by God. ונתנם אדוני לפניכם, ועשיתם להם ככל המצווה אשר צוויתי אתכם. And God will continue to do exactly as he did while Moses was your leader, this time with Joshua your leader. חזקו ואימצו, therefore be strong and be brave. אל תיראו, do not be afraid. ואל תארצו מפניכם, כי אדוני אלוהיך הוא ההולך עומד, לא יפחה ולא יעזבך. For God is with you, he will not forsake you, and he will not abandon you. The blessing after the Torah. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם. אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו. ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. A young child was once given an assignment to write a report on childbirth. He went home and asked his parents, Mom, how was I born? She said, the stork brought you. She, and he said, well, how about you and Dad? How were you guys born? She hesitated for a moment and said, the stork brought us too. The child was intrigued and he said, what about grandma and grandpa? Yep, yeah, the stork brought them also. He went back to school and the teacher said, well, how you doing on your report? He said, this is going to be a tough one. We haven't had a natural childbirth in our home for generations. You know, sometimes we try to baby our children. We don't really tell them the truth. We, we feed them with things that we think they want to hear, but it doesn't really do them any good. And actually, they know better. We, we have to be candid with our children and with ourselves. My dad used to say on the high holidays, it's time to be candid, not candied. We have to be honest with ourselves and our mistakes, especially on slichot. We have to admit our sins and confess our faults and honesty. is the only way to do that. If we're not honest with ourselves, this whole process can't possibly happen. I'd like to um, use a phraseology with you in order to help make this point crystal clear. In order to be a Jew, you have to say a Jew, which is French, because we're sponsored by someone who speaks French, so I wanted to use a little French. We have to say a Jew. which means goodbye. It sounds like a Jew, but it's also a Jew means goodbye. To be Jewish, especially on Rosh Hashanah, means to say a Jew to our childish behavior, a Jew to our selfishness, to our desire to only look out for ourselves and not consider the feelings of others. A Jew, we should say, to our desire not to get involved in what's going on in the world, especially when things are going in the wrong direction. And each one of us is urgently needed. A Jew! To our inclination to get upset and to get angry because people might have a different opinion than we do. And how silly is that? We have to say a Jew to our indifference towards those who serve us, our veterans, and those who are in the military now. We need to make sure that they are supported and make sure that we choose leaders who will support and honor and respect our military. We must say a Jew to this sense of hopelessness and helplessness that sometimes surrounds us, that paralyzes us into inactivity. We must say a Jew to those feelings of hopelessness that cause us to just do absolutely nothing. Let us embrace the optimism and the indomitable spirit of Judaism and say a Jew to indifference. My friends, we also need to do something that's very, very difficult at this time. As you may know, sometimes I say things that are a little bit controversial, but that's because I believe 
it's important to be honest. And certainly on the high holy days, on Salichot, we have to make an honest confession. So let me suggest to you a confession that we should make as a Jewish community, especially on 9-11. In order to make this confession, I want to describe a, a young child who was a very friendly, outgoing, wonderful kid. He had many friends, enjoyed playing soccer, and was described by most people as a very amiable, pleasant child. One day, he decided to visit a madrasa, uh, financed by Saudi Arabia, and they trained him and uh, indoctrinated him into a fundamentalist version of Islam. Gradually, his friends noticed a difference. And by the time he emerged from there three years later, he was a completely different person. His name was Osama bin Laden, and he eventually went on to lead a life of terrorism that resulted in the tragic death of thousands of people in America. Osama bin Laden is seen as one of the worst, most vicious killers that we can think of in America today. Yet he was an innocent child who had his innocence, his childhood, and his mind taken from him. He was brainwashed and duped in one of the most vicious, cruel forms of child abuse in which he was made into a weapon of war to serve radical Islam. We need to prevent and to do what we can to stop this child abuse. How can we do that? We can do that, my friends, by making a confession as Jews and notice the fact that this type of thinking that he had, that I have the right to kill people of a different religion because God wants me to do that. Where would he get this notion from? Is it possible that anyone could have heard the Torah reading tonight and not see the connection? The Torah reading says, God will go before you and he will lead your fight to eradicate the enemy and to wipe out all the people in the promised land, just as he did to Sihon and Og. This, my friends, is something that many Jewish people are incapable of seeing because we see the faults in others very clearly. But when it comes to our own scripture, our own background, many of us are blind on the high holidays, we have an obligation to be honest. It's easy to find fault with others. Let's look in ourselves and in our own tradition and recognize the fact that this concept that God authorizes and warrants and approves of and demands that we kill people because they have a different religion, this is a great scourge upon our society. Let us say adieu to that type of thinking. But more than that, let us cleanse the Jewish religion of this concept and send a message to the world that we are proud of the Torah. We are proud of the fact that Christians and Muslims and the freedom fighters around the world, including the founding fathers, derived inspiration from the Jewish Torah. We're proud of that. But there's some parts of the Torah we're not so proud of, and we do not believe it was written by God. In fact, we know that it was not because God doesn't order genocide. God doesn't think in a Bronze Age mentality. God, if we understand what this concept means, this creative power that's within us, wants us to build bridges with others, not to kill people. So let us repudiate and say adieu to this crazy notion that God wrote the Torah, which is actually blasphemy against God to say that he wrote it. If he did write it, he must have been having a bad day. Let us say adieu to this notion, and then we will be on a moral footing to be able to approach our Christian and Muslim brothers and sisters and say, he didn't write our book, and he didn't write yours either. This, my friends, is the approach of the Day of Judgment. We must judge ourselves candidly and honestly. And once we do that, once we can cleanse ourselves of our faults, and once we can cleanse Judaism of this notion that it's 
God-given, that our scriptures are infallible, once we can cure that misguided notion, we will be able to send a message to the world that we believe in a type of religion that embraces everyone, a cosmic point of view that brings Jews, Christians, Muslims, atheists, secular people, and religious people, Americans, and Russians, and Chinese, and Jamaicans, and everyone, whites and blacks, all people together. Let us embrace this type of religion, not one that says we're going to kill someone who's different. Say adieu to that. And the opposite of adieu, which is goodbye, is we. Oui. We oui means yes. Let us say yes to a different type of approach, a rational approach, in which we join together with all people in order to try to accomplish the goal of the High Holy Days, to improve, to do better, to reconcile with one another, and to be instrumental in making 5781 the best year ever. And let us also work towards a future which will never, ever, ever see an attack like we saw on 9-11, because religion will be cleansed and will say adieu to this type of hatred and will say adieu to a religion that builds walls of separation and will say bonjour or will welcome a type of religion that builds bridges among people of all backgrounds. Shabbat Shalom. have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. There is a huge pall of smoke coming from that direction.
sanu ke goye haratot velo samanu kmish bechot hadama shelo sam khelkenu kahem ve gor aleinu ke khor hamonam vanachnu korim u mishtakhavim u modim lifnei melech malche Kadosh Baruch Hu We now continue with the Kaddish on the Slichot, this commemoration of 9-11. We read the Kaddish with special poignancy. We think of all of those people who gave everything who gave their lives protecting this nation, to our veterans, to those who never made it back, to those who are serving right now in the military, those first responders who on 9-11 sacrificed their lives and are continuing to do so today. There are many brave souls throughout this country today who are risking their lives during this pandemic in order to try to bring about a little bit of comfort, aid, and assistance to others. As we read the Kaddish, we give thanks and we bless the memory of all who, are, who have perished, especially those who perished fighting for a good cause and protecting our freedom and our liberties. We continue with the Kaddish. Yiskidal v'yiskidash shemei rabah v'yalmad yivroach rusei v'yamlich ma'achusei v'chayachon v'yomechon v'chayyedu chol beis Yisrael v'agalav izman kari v'yimru amen Yehi shemei rabah mivorach l'olam omei omaya Yisporach, yistabach, yispoav, yischoma, yisnase V'yisadar v'yisalev yisalal shemei rekudush ha'berechu L'elam en kor b'yachasa v'shirasa T'yush b'chasa v'nechamasa D'am yichon b'yomah v'yimru amen Yehi shlama rabba min shmaya v'chayim aleinu v'yakho yisrael v'yimru amen Ose shalom b'yimromav V'yase shalom aleinu v'yakho yisrael v'yimru amen now it's time for the final benediction. May you be blessed and may you be protected with good health. May the light of love shine upon you always. May you be lifted up by the power and the inspiration of the words that we have read and heard tonight. And may you use these wonderful teachings from our heritage in order to lift you to higher levels of achievement and of giving and of being a blessing to others. And I also want to say on this 9-11, may the memory of those who have fallen, the memory of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, may their memory be a blessing. And may we be inspired by their valor to do everything we can to help make this country better and to help improve humanity, and the world. I hope to see you on the high holiday services that are coming up next week. We've really got a wonderful, wonderful service planned for you throughout the entire holidays. They're free of charge. And I hope you'll also tell your friends and family about it. This is going to be a very, very unique high holiday celebration like you've never seen before, sharing a rational, inspirational approach, if you want, to Judaism with wonderful videos, wonderful inspiration, and wonderful messages for a new year where we try to create not just a new year, but a new you in which we transcend our past and become energized in order to achieve a glorious future. I hope to see you there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have our national anthem sung by the combined choirs the United States Naval Academy, the United States Air Force Academy, the United States Military Academy at West Point, the United States Coast Guard Academy, and accompanied by the United States Army Herald Trumpets.
Good evening. Shabbat Shalom. I'm Sharon Leibovitz, and we at Lador Vador thank you for choosing and watching our Shabbat celebration today. Thank you to Rabbi Barry Silver, Rose Lopater, Andy Sussman, and Arnie Pickles for creating this special Shabbat experience for us all today. Lador Vador offers a universal and rational approach to Judaism. This Judaism is the Judaism of the future available today at Lador Vador. It's a Judaism based on modern understanding, reason, and science. And we welcome and seek to unite all Jews of any denomination, both practicing and non-practicing, interfaith families, young and old, and those who are not Jewish but are seeking something more. We invite you to join with us, support us and share us with your family and friends for our wonderful and enlightened new approach. We think you'll like it, and they will too. We're very excited to share the upcoming High Holy Day services, complimentary from La Dorvador to one and all. Your donations are needed now more than ever for La Dorvador to continue to thrive. We need you. We ask you to go to our website, ladorvador.org, or contact us at info at ladorvador.org for more information about our flexible membership options or to contribute to our cause. We will provide Erev Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah morning services online next Friday, September 18th, and Saturday, September 19th. All of our High Holy Day services and program links will be available from our website, ladorvador.org. We will also offer a special live Zoom and Schmooze for Rosh Hashanah on Saturday, September 19th at 12 noon. We hope to see you then live and in person. And we also hope to see you tonight at 8.30 p.m. at our weekly Shabbat Zoom and Schmooze program. You can go to ladorvador.org and click on the Zoom and Schmooze link. We wish you all a beautiful Shabbat and a great week. We hope it's filled with laughter and love. Shabbat Shalom from the Lord Vidor to you. And we wish each of you Lashana Tova 5781. Love, 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 by an ending love and love. 